anyone in a rush, here's the too long didn't watch review. If you are unable to put speakers in your ceiling for your height channels and have the DefTech 9000 series towers, the A90s are a no brainer. You'll just have to turn them up a little bit and position your mains properly. They do represent the best way to maximize your receiver's atmospheric sound capabilities. However, if you are able to put speakers in your ceiling, that will truly be the best way to go as you will get the best sonic performance and decreased localization. If you're new to my channel and like all things home theater, please consider subscribing as I'll be updating this channel with relevant content. So in my budget home theater video, I showed you all what I did to get home theater properly set up and going by keeping the budget just under 10 grand. What I didn't know was that I'd be investing in a room that feels as if it's never gonna get done. I'm sure most of you out there understand that pain. After seeing the Dolby Atmos logo on many iTunes movies in the store on my Apple TV 4K, I knew I was missing out on some action, considering that my Moran 6013 receiver could handle it. Knowing that I didn't want to install speakers in the ceiling, I had to opt for the next best option, the matching A90 toppers for my DevTech towers. These two-way add-on modules are Adobe Atmos and DTSX certified and feature one one-inch driver and one four-and-a-half inch mid-range driver with a frequency response of 86 hertz to 40,000 hertz. Their slope speaker baffle is what allows for sound to fire upwards into the ceiling and down onto the listening position. Installation is simple as you simply remove your tower's top plate and mount the speaker. You also must attach your receiver's height output to the back of each tower. If you have a Marantz like me, be sure to set your speakers to Dolby SP and not Height SP and adjust your distances accordingly. Now, I'm no audio engineer, but I can safely say I've trained my ear over the last couple of years to understand what I'm supposed to be listening for when it comes to watching films with an Atmos or DTSX soundtrack. Hearing some of the films I mentioned in this review on other systems as a reference have allowed me to know exactly what to look for and when. With that said, I knew my first test would be none other than Blade Runner 2049, a benchmark for Atmos tracks. There are three scenes in this film that are supposed to give you that atmospheric experience with ease, and one of them is right at the beginning, when Officer K's car flies over the camera. I really did feel like I was in that atmosphere, um, but it wasn't as good as I remember when I heard it on a speaker system that actually had Atmos height speakers with larger drivers. In the scene where Deckard is fighting Officer K in the music room, I really felt like I was in that room with those characters as the sound really felt encapsulating. The same goes for the final fight near the LA River. Because there was some sort of roof above these characters' heads, I again felt the same atmospheric effect. After finishing this movie for the ninth time, but now with the Atmos toppers, I truly feel like these things do their intended effect but only when you're watching a scene where characters have a roof over their head, or so I thought, because my next test was Mad Max, a film that primarily takes place outside from beginning to end. Now, despite that, this is an Atmos-worthy presentation full and through, so the A90s sounded like they were on throughout the entire time. Right at the beginning, there are whispers and voices coming from the high channels, and I was able to hear that no problem with these speakers. If anyone had any doubts as to whether their height speakers or Atmos toppers from any brand were working, throw in this movie, whether you got a disc or whether you got a digital, and that'll be a surefire way to lift your suspicions. During the scene that's regarded as the most perfect Atmos demo to many, I heard sounds all above me as expected. The music, the environment, sound effects, all that stuff, it all blended harmoniously together to give me that feeling that I was enveloped in sound. That right there made me feel confident in my purchase. Another cool scene is about an hour and 33 minutes in, right before the Valkyrie gets run over, Joe's truck passes over the camera and you hear like this vicious rumble and roar. But the thing is, you don't hear it as good with the A90s because the driver is a little small. And a system I've heard where the drivers are actually over my head and more larger, I heard that rumble and roar much better. But the A90s still do the trick very well. For the last test, I wanted to try a movie that I've never seen before. Something, something fresh, something exciting, something that I didn't know what to expect. So I put on First Man as it's a highly rated movie. It has Atmos and I was expecting the audio to match the Rotten Tomato score. And so there's this one scene showing the Gemini 8's launch into space. And when the camera is inside the cockpit with Ryan Gosling, you're able to feel like you're actually there in this old primitive NASA shuttle. The A90s allowed me to hear the rattles and the shakiness of the craft as if I was in it. I'm sure Neil Armstrong himself was probably scared at this moment in the real life event. And I too felt that emotional impact because of the A90s. Now that's what I call Atmos action. So if that wasn't enough, here's how I know the A90s function as intended. 
There's a scene about an hour and 22 minutes in when Armstrong is testing the landing equipment and he ejects from it. It explodes on the ground and the camera shifts to a first person view of him in the air. At that point, his parachute opens up and I heard the chute open up above my head. Again, Atmos action. As you can tell, I'm pleased with the results from the A90s, but I do understand that with actual speakers in the ceiling with larger drivers, I could get better results. But since I rent, these will have to do for now, and that's perfectly okay with me. I did have to increase the volume of them using my receiver's speaker volume adjuster to get to the sweet spot that I wanted to be in, but not to the point where they seemed overpowering. If they do seem overpowering and you do this, you're gonna get some localization, which kills the effect. So I suggest not to increase your settings too high for your toppers and the receiver. Oh, and one last thing, this is very minor. As for the physical quality of these speakers, they're very good, don't get me wrong, as everything but Def Tech. Um, but I did have a little bit of trouble with one of my toppers going onto one of my towers. Uh, it seems, I guess because they were manufactured at different times. My recommendation, when you buy your towers, buy your toppers as well in the same purchase. If anyone has any desire to get these speakers or a similar speaker from a different brand for your particular towers, I recommend it because it gives you the intended effect and it saves you wiring time. If you guys enjoyed this review or my thought process on reaching my verdict on these speakers, give this video a thumbs up and let me know what films I should watch next to test out my system. I'll be glad to reply to your comments to let you know what I think. Until next time, it's been real, it's been fun as you know, and I'll see you in the next one.